and we're live. Welcome. Today we're talking with Lorna Hollinger from Australia. So Lorna is uh, connected to us uh, one degree of separation through Audrey Acton, who's one of our big sisters in the group. And Lorna is a multi-award winning life coach, EFT practitioner, and founder of the Australian Tapping Institute. She's been regularly featured in the media and a guest on a number of international podcasts. Lorna holds diplomas in life coaching and business management and practitioner certifications in emotional freedom techniques, which is what EFT tapping is, and uh, also in neuro-linguistic programming. Oh, we have a lot to geek out about. <laughs> this is wonderful. So thank you, Lorna, for joining us all the way from Australia. And apologies again, because I, as usual, I've screwed up my time zones. <laughs> and I think they're going to change on me again soon. So oops. <laughs> We're going to blame daylight savings. <laughs> so, uh, Lorna, I've warned you as an intro in our group, we talk about our food and lifestyle choices as kale and kryptonite. Kale is our superfoods, the things that are super good for us and that we try to do every day. And kryptonite are the things that sneak in that probably <clears throat> don't belong there. <laughs> and so I'd love for you to tell us what's your kale and what's your kryptonite. My kale would have to be the tapping, and I know everyone's going to roll and go, yeah, of course it is, but it just, it just is. It's the thing that I do every single day and have done since I found tapping. It, it, How it long has that been? Um, I think it's probably six or seven years now. Wow. You know, six or seven years, a friend stumbled me onto it, and I was very resistant and thinking, how can tapping on my own body do anything? Like, really... This is far more hocus pocus than I can possibly um, engage in. But when she she was the coach and I was the client, captive audience, I was sold. Totally uh, sold. So my yeah. kale has to be has the tapping. Be okay. Oh, I'm so excited so to get to get you to introduce this whole concept because it's it's getting to be talked about a lot here. Um, so it's so, great to talk to an expert about it because there's probably a lot of, as we say in the American media, alternative facts out there. <laughs> Absolutely. Which leads into my kryptonite, which yeah. is that negative self chatter that whole conversation that goes on in your own head that you just don't know what to do with. Yes. Go do tapping. Yes. Oh, yeah. I call that I call that voice that inner board member. You know, every board has one of those people. Every board has one person who is just an obstructionist and is always like, nope, I can think of a million ways. This is not going to work. <laughs> I call that go and pass it by the committee. Yes. <laughs> Take it to committee, get committee to agree. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's what yeah. I say. Is I say that, you know, what you need to do is you need to bring your entire board into your head and listen to everybody's <laughs> advice and then say, thank you so much for your advice. And I'm really not going to take it this time. <laughs> I love that. I love the idea of having a board. That, that, that works. Yes, because that, like allows that. The other, that allows the other voices to come in. <laughs> Absolutely. And they all need to be heard. Yes, exactly. So that way you can pick and choose which one you want to listen to. Better. <laughs> yeah. All right. So great. We have your kale, which is the EFT tapping and your kryptonite, which is that board member in your head. We all have them. We all have them. So first of all, I'd love for you to tell us how you came to do what you do and what it is exactly. Okay. So primarily my, my flagship program at the moment is the EFT practitioner. So I run a dual certification course in emotional freedom techniques, so tapping and life coaching. So when students graduate out of my school, they've got a business in a box. They're, they're ready to go. They know how to work with clients. They understand human behavior and patterns, and they can really help their clients on a really deep level. So primarily that school for me is my absolute baby. I'm a single gal. My kids have all moved out. It, it, it's my thing. Uh, tapping itself, I already had a life coaching and NLP practice probably getting close to a decade ago. And then, you know, maybe six, seven years ago, a girlfriend introduced me to tapping. It's tapping on your own head. Seriously, it just was focus, focus, as I said. But once I got into it and worked out what it does in the body, that was, that was me. And I know you and I will talk about what it actually does and how it yes. helps you. Um, yeah. Yeah. My, okay, my plan great. is, I talk about world domination and I kind of laugh about it a little bit, but that really is my plan. In, for that's me, so funny. I've started saying that too. So what's your plan with this business? Oh, 
world domination. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The favorite destination for EFT training globally. That is my, my tagline. Oh. Might have to make a trip to Australia. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just a short hop, skip, and jump over to like Lord of the Rings land in New Zealand. Oh, well, I've just come back from there. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Yeah, I spent three weeks driving around there at Christmas time. So it was just, yeah, oh, hire a car, drive. Fun. Yeah. Yes. Um, one of the things that you mentioned while we were chatting offline before we started was that uh, because what you do is run the Australian, uh, and I'm going to mess it up, the Australian In Tapping Institute. Tapping Institute. Um, yes. So that is what you do for a living. And you are not actually a hands-on practitioner working one-on-one -on -one with clients most of the time. But um, yeah. in our group, we know that anxiety and depression and all sorts of really strong emotions tend to come with uh, mm -hmm. the perimenopausal transition. So I thought it would be super fun to have you in to actually give us a demonstration. And there is a download below that you can uh, take a look at so that it makes sense to you and it will remind you about what Lorna is discussing. So with that said, tell us what tapping can do for us before we even get started as to what we're doing. So tapping is, what tapping will do is it, it actually works on the stress response in the body. So we all know that fight or flight, it's that little buzz in the energy system, somebody says something to you, something happens, a hot flush happens, you have a thought about yourself, about someone else, all of that is driven, drives into that stress response. And we all know that's the cortisol, the adrenal, the epinephrine, all that toxic stuff just floats into our, into our bloodstream, into our lymphatic stream and all that. We know that happens. So what I found was happens when I hit that menopausal stuff is the more hot flushes happened or the changes happened, the more stressed I got. And the more anxious I've got and the angrier I've got with my body. And like, I, I, I had this conversation. We're not having menopause. I don't have time for menopause. I'm, I'm too busy. <laughs> don't even go there. So when I found myself in there, that was a real, that was real stress for me. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have a mum. I've got no aunts, uncles. I came from a tiny little family. So I had no women in my family to even ask about it. Yeah. So for me, it was a major, major stress. So tapping will work on, so tapping is the same meridian sec, meridians as uh, acupuncture and acupressure. We all know that the body is on electrical circuitry. So same sort of stuff. If we're going for acupressure, acupuncture, we're going to work on the same electrical circuits by doing the tapping. So as you tap on your body, the activation of the certain points activates parts of this energy circuitry and starts to rewire it. The idea is when you have that thought that runs through your head, we want to take the emotional charge and intensity out of it. Can't change it, the, the event that happened, but taking that emotional charge and get rid of, getting rid of that, that activation of fight or flight mm. is going to help the stress response, which I believe triggers more of my menopausal symptoms or results and, and what actually happens in my body. Oh, I love that you brought up hot flashes, actually, because i that's one thing that a lot of clients talk about, like, oh, I'm just having all these hot flashes. And when I say, well, what's your trigger? And they say, trigger, they just happen. I'm like, yeah, if you pay attention, you will notice what causes it. And it's, it's different for different people, but I think stress mm -hmm. is certainly a commonality. So I think the big ones are, you know, alcohol, caffeine, sugar, and stress for me. And so I know that if I have a glass of wine that I can expect a hot flash. And it's kind of nice because then I'm like, okay, now I have a choice. <laughs> so I think the stress response is one that is common to a lot of us. And it's not one that we really have a choice about. Like we know right. that stress can cause it. We can't completely insulate ourselves from stress. So what you're doing with EFT is really... Um, giving you a way to rewire so that you're not tapping into that rush of emotion and, and adrenaline. Correct. So four years ago, because I'm a single girl, so he's here and I'm dating this guy. He's a bit annoying at the time. And I'm at the office and I'm getting hot and I'm thinking, I don't understand what this is. Because remember, I told my body, I'm not having this menopause <laughs> thing. I don't have time for it. It's so called a power surge. <laughs> yeah. So 
I was I was quite taken aback when you got blood tests. No, you, your hormones are fine, but th this hot flush is clean. So me being a researcher was so what is it? What's happening? What's causing it? What was I just thinking about? And it wasn't just with him, but that was the trigger to go. Let's start looking at what's going on in your life, the things that are bothering you, bugging you, annoying you. And then I started to work on those. The end result was I don't get as many of the hot flushes. I barely get any hot flushes at, at, anymore. Uh, my worst is probably a more of an insomnia thing, which I also use tapping for. But as a hot flush thing, dealing with the emotions and the triggers sort of off to the side has resulted in less of them. Yeah. Because I don't have the stress responses because the thoughts and the emotions that I'm thinking of all the other stuff, so that's not happening. Yeah. So it, it was never a really direct, I'm having a hot flush, do, do tapping. It was me making a conscious choice to start to work on some of my own triggers and behaviours and stuff anyway. Yeah. And the beautiful result has been less of them. Mm. Oh, I love this. You're going to have everybody signing up for this. <laughs> Everybody's going to become a believer. <laughs> and the beautiful thing is it is absolutely free. While, yes, you may want a practitioner to do some of the really deep work, EFT is self-help. It is a self-tool. It's in your hands and your fingers 24-7. What, what is the history behind it? I don't even, like, where did it come from? It came from America, a guy by the name of Gary Craig. Um, worked with a Roger Callahan, there was thought field therapy, and he basically took it and started doing a lot of research in three decades ago. What's that? Sort of the 80s, 70s, and 80s. And it was on the activation of, of, of the meridian points and starting to tap on parts of the body and what was happening with traumas and with events and with PTSD people. And he started to just do this direct work. Let's talk about what's happening. Let's do some tapping. Let's see. And he used, you know, a, a pretty general SUDS rating, 0 to 10, what's the intensity? And he worked out that he could start to bring down that stress response. Mm. So, so yeah, it's, it's started in America. And it, it's far bigger over there than it is, say, in Australia or the UK. But, you know, that, that's because I haven't dominated the world yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> but, yeah, so it has been around. And, and, look, they can trace back even further. They can start to look at that. Um, the First World War and Second World War, some really smart psychologists and therapists started to get into work with some of the guys coming off the battlefield. And that's sort of where it really started. But it was really Gary Craig who brought tapping, as we know it, to the forefront as a, um, as a therapy. Hmm. So it's interesting. There's acupuncture, which works with the same meridians. Mm -hmm. And then there's acupressure, Pressure. which some people also say, oh, yes, there's a point on your hand for headaches and things like that. And then Correct. tapping is actually activating the same the same points but using a tap so okay. how so that you you're actually right they actually do all the points actually do a tap to primary organs in the body <sighs> okay they actually do but as a as a general thing let's not confuse anyone's world with having to worry about you know my liver's playing up where do i tap there is so much to know about meridians and yeah, yeah so oh, let's no. just bring it back to simple yeah don't complicate it Excellent. All right. So I would love for you to introduce what, what the process is and we'll, yeah. do, uh, I'll, I'll try to hold my questions for the end, but I may pop in and ask you. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's envisage at this point, we're beautiful. We've got video. Uh, I'm going to take you to a tapping round as it would be as someone at home would do. Not necessarily if you came to a, a therapist or practitioner, but if just imagine you're at home. So we're going to do, we're going to do the karate chop point. Now all these all these points are on that diagram that, um, that you've given your, your viewers anyway. So just download it if you get lost. But literally, just here on the karate shop. And Even though I'm worried about my stress. So yeah, how, so many, gonna, how many fingers? Does it matter? Does not matter. You can one, you can two. And how does it matter which you know? Hand, you know? Not very. Just enough that you can feel it. Don't. I had a, I had a student one time who came back to a workshop and she was bruised because she'd been really, 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 really angry dealing with, and I, oh, so yeah, so not okay. enough to bruise yourself, but not little fairy finger touches either. Just you know, okay. remember you're, you're activating. So the idea is when a demonstration like this, I'll give a sentence and you repeat it after me. That, that's okay. sort of how it, how it works in, in this scenario. And, so we're because, gonna do and because I'm, I'm sort of like 
all about the details. It doesn't matter how long you do it, how many taps you do. No. Yeah. So yeah. normally we would do five, six taps on each one. So if we stop it now and we just start from scratch, um, we're going to do, um, do a better explanation. We do five or six taps on each point. Um, I'm going to show you points. So this is karate chop. This is eyebrow. So it's just sort of where the hair is here. Yep. Side of eye, not in the eye, but on the side. Yeah, bit challenging when they have glasses. Yeah. In here. And then the under the eye, kind of on the bony bit. Yep. And so the nose. Cheekbone? Yeah, yeah, on that cheekbone. Yeah, I kind of figure it's in and around that cheekbone. It's one of these funny things with tapping. When you tap on a point, it, it feels good. When you tap your sweet spot, you know you found it. Ah. And it's always in and around there, but it, it's like you find your sweet spot. Okay. Under the nose, under the chin, and it's the crease line. The other one's the, the collarbone, which is kind of up here. I'll often tap flat-handed, and I'll go through that with your, um, with your gals as well, but yeah, on the collarbone. Now, there is another point that's under the arms. Big busted women, Australia, sweaty armpits, we don't go there. <laughs> I, I just don't. But if people are, are looking and going, oh, I've seen tapping and there's under the arm, they're dead right, there is. Okay. Top of the head, right up on that fontanelle where the baby's sort of head is softened. Mm -hmm. So that's a round from here to here. That's considered a round. Okay. So if you're doing it at home, you're going to want to do a round. Okay. A round. Yep. All right. And it does. They're all attached to different um, primary organs. Don't get caught up on that. Don't worry about it. We're just going to do super simple so you can do it at home. Okay, one more question. Right hand, left hand, doesn't matter. Both hands. Does not matter. Both hands, wherever you're comfortable with. You'll see people one finger, two. I just come up, yeah, then result of a broken arm. So I've had to do left handed. Uh, yeah, I broke it in New Zealand on that fabulous holiday I'm telling you about. <laughs> I'd love to have said it was some amazing trekking, you know, doing something adventurous. No, I yeah, no, fell no, in a no, park no. looking at a dog. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, it does not matter. It does not matter. You're, okay. you're even. Don't complicate. Excellent. All right, we're going to do here. So we do this three times, even though. Even though. I have some stress. I have some stress. But I choose to love and accept who I am. I choose to love and accept who I am. Even though I have all this stress. Even though I have all this stress. My life goes mental. My life goes mental. I love and accept who I am. I love and accept who I am. Even though I have. Even though I have. All of this stress going on. All of this stress going on. My life can get crazy. My life can get crazy. Out of control. Out of control. I choose to love and accept who I am. I choose to love and accept who I am. So imagine that someone's got some just, we're just going to do basic, basic stress. We're just going to go all of this stress. All of this stress. All of this stress. All of this stress. These stressful thoughts. These stressful thoughts. All of this stress. All of this stress. These stressful thoughts. These stressful thoughts. All of these thoughts. All of these thoughts. Running around in my head. Oh, one more time. Running around in my head. Oh, running around in my head. All of these thoughts. All of these thoughts. Negative thoughts. Negative thoughts. I can't control them. I can't control them. They're running around in my head. They're running around in my head. All of these thoughts. All of these thoughts. All of these thoughts. All of these thoughts. I have no control. I have no control. I, I, I have no control. I have no control. They just happen. They just happen. Out of control. Out of control. Then it just happens. What just happened? Whoosh in my body. Whoosh in my body. All of this stress. All of this stress. Uncontrolled thoughts. Uncontrolled thoughts. All of my stress. All of my stress. All of this stress. All of this stress. Releasing. Releasing. Calming. Calming. Releasing. Releasing. I'm going to work on managing this. And work on managing this. I'm going to work on releasing this. Work on releasing this. I'm going to reduce my stress. I'm going to reduce my stress. I'm going to work on these thoughts. And work on these thoughts. Get calmer. Get calmer. Get calmer. Get calmer. Control of these thoughts. Control of these thoughts. Bring calm into my life. Bring calm into my life.
big breaths. Now for me, I find the sensations in my body, I explain it like I feel the blood moving in my body. Yes. I have, that, a, I have a tingling down the entire right side of my body right now. Perfect, perfect. Yes. Now I just need to bounce yeah. down and do the other side. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, in the energy world, that's the masculine side. Is it, you know, a, a, a man bothering you? Is it your masculine side out of balance? Mm. You know, right side's masculine, left side's feminine. Okay. You know, <laughs> Neither here nor there for this, but there. So that, that would be a normal level of tapping that, that somebody could do. And when we talk about, when I use the word stress, if somebody had a particular trigger from somebody, somebody just annoyed them, you would tap on that person who annoyed me, that person who annoyed me. Uh, you get cut off in traffic, that, that thing that happened in, in the car, thing that happened in the car. It doesn't always necessarily mean to be the word stress. Mm -hmm. If you spent a couple of minutes tapping on that thing that just happened, it takes the intensity out of that thing that just happened. Mm. Because you and I know you can't just tap on my menopause. It's not going to get us anywhere. Right. It's the triggering thoughts that we want to work on. Mm. Okay. But it's really, it, you just you kind of make it up as you go. Absolutely make it up as you go. Whatever thoughts come into your head, whatever other words, the only thing I recommend is stick to the one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you're going to go and do some benching tapping, which is very, very, very helpful. If you've had one of those days where, you know, rather than go to the fridge, rather than go to the pantry, rather than pop the, the bottle of wine or get a cigarette, do some ranting tapping. Mm. Walk around and do some... <laughs> <laughs> and that was just happened. Take the intensity out because you guys about you about lifestyle too. Mm -hmm. Do I now need that chocolate? Do I now need to rummage in the fridge? Do I want to have a cigarette? Do I want a glass of wine? Mm. It's a choice that you make from a less stress response space. Because what happens when the adrenals and the cortisol all that flood your body? Creative thought and, and logical thought, all that stuff starts to get moved away. Because fight or flight's meant to move you. It's to get you out of danger. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to be creative, logical, sensible thought pattern in that moment. Right. So if you use some tapping to take the intensity out of how you're feeling in the moment, mm -hmm. you might not make the other choice. Mm. Therefore, you won't get as angry with your body. You mm. won't get as annoyed with yourself. Which I don't know if you're anything like me. That would then cause another... Another cycle, oh, yeah. So, yeah. is there a is there any sort of pattern to when you do this whole cycle, this circle that you're making, is is there a point at which you start saying, "I'm moving through this, I'm calming it, I'm releasing it"? Is uh, depending on how you feel, depending on how intense. If you're doing ranting, tapping, and you're you're angry, you're just. Ah, 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 ah. Don't worry about the positive stuff. Just get it out of your system. Ah. But if you're going to sit for a couple of minutes and, and make a point of, I'm going to do tapping for five minutes, I would do maybe half the time on the negative stuff. Because mm. that's the thing. With, with tapping, we focus on the negative because you're having the thought anyway. Why not do something with it? Mm. Why yeah. let it sit in your body to it, yeah. yeah. Not exactly. Acknowledge you're having it anyway clear the energy out of it, then let's go do some good stuff. Got it. Okay. So maybe 50-50. Maybe uh-huh. If, if I'm doing a lot of my tapping, because I do it daily, I don't do the 50-50. I just, I just work on what the stress is, what the response is, what the thing is, because I do it so regularly anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm already yeah. doing a lot of the positive stuff anyway. Interesting. So yeah. it really is, a, it's such a self-help, do-it-yourself DIY, at home, absolutely free technique. Absolutely free. The, way, the time when a practitioner comes in is, if you, have, if you get to a stage where something's really deep, it's traumatic, it's, you find that you can't go into it, your, your brain goes like suddenly making a cup of tea is really important, let me out of here. That's the time when you would use a practitioner. Mm. But for the work that most of us have going on to start with, Absolutely, on your own. Mm, you don't need beautiful. anybody. Yeah. And, and, and how many of us journal anyway? I, I'm a journaler. I like to do my journaling. They're all my tapping points. They're all my triggers. They're my stuff that's going on anyway. 
Yeah. So just write in your journal and then tap on what you're writing about. <laughs> Absolutely. It's not uncommon for me to write and tap at the same time. Depending. That's yeah. not even ambidextrous. That's what? That's multitasking. <laughs> multitasking, but you're going, I'm going through the thoughts and the feelings and stuff anyway. Yeah. Do it all together. Yeah. But imagine this on public transport. You're traveling, I don't know, bus, train, wherever, going to work, and something's triggering you about going to work. Something's mm -hmm. triggering you about the people on the train. Um, the busy whatever this is my go-to place so this is just a hand up on the on yeah. up, up like this imagine that you're on public transport and it looks like you're tapping the music yeah hand, uh, in the wind, hand, hand inside your clothes if you've got a scarf on and things nobody notices yeah these people are going to notice yeah <laughs> but this nobody pays any attention to Oh, I love Such that. Such a subtle. It is. It's so subtle and it's so easy. You could walk around the office and be doing it. Something happens at your desk and you can be doing it. Nobody else needs to know mm -hmm. that you're just having this little conversation. So perfect example, if something's happened at the office, most, most of the triggers we have will come from our past. So we, we get a fright in the moment or a thought in the moment. We are either fearful of the past or something's happened. Mm -hmm. So my thing here is, I am safe. Yeah. I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm safe. Or I am fine, or I am okay. Three, three words, any three, doesn't matter which one. Just here. I'm fine, mm -hmm. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So you can actually just, eventually, if you do this on a regular basis, just that, just that alone will... We'll start. Even if Bring I'm it. going to tell people up front, straight up today, if you decide today I want to do some tapping, I don't know what to say, just this. I'm fine or I'm safe or I'm okay. Your unconscious brain knows what to go and find and work on. It does. But just even starting here, you don't have to think any further than, where did that woman put her hand? She had it here. What yeah. did she say? I'm fine. I'm safe. I'm okay. Just any, any combo of that stuff. Oh. It's about getting that trauma out. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's that's wonderful. And I usually ask people if there's one tiny actionable step that we can take towards it. That's it right there, ladies. So that's it fine, right safe, there. Safe. Excellent. So yep. that's that, that's that Too collarbone. Too right? easy. It is. I mean, you can tap with your fingers and your collarbone, but I'm I'm giving people that super easy, inconspicuous. Yep. Nobody's noticing what you're doing. Because let's face it, it's a little bit hocus pocus. It's a little bit weird. And, you know, you're sitting on the train doing this. Everybody's looking at you. <laughs> In the office. Even, even you know, one of your family's going to look. What, what are you doing? Who's this? This is subtle. <laughs> so you did bring up uh, the fact that there are moments where we might decide that we're not working through something and that we want to find a practitioner. So um, I would love to know, because you are in the perfect position to answer this question, if someone is looking for a practitioner who uses EFT as, as a modality and or a, one of their modalities, what would you tell her to look for and what would be some red flags to avoid? Alrighty, the first thing that comes to mind is certification. It is a completely unregulated industry. That, that's the, the scary part about it. It is unregulated. Uh, so find out about certification that the person has. It may be even more important, find out how long they've been doing it. Mm. Find out what experience they've had with your, with, with your issues. Actually, with your issues, but that's probably a little bit difficult because well, they will take them further down into the issue that won't even be the issue. So maybe that's not the best one. Mm. Like anything, have a conversation. Have a conversation with the person you're considering working with. Get a feel for them. Get a feel for do you feel they get you? Mm -hmm. Do you feel they've got other tools? Do you feel they've got enough experience under their belt? I love that my graduates come out and they start working in the world. We spend a year together. So, you know, other courses are six weeks. I spend a year with my graduates. They come out with personal development, uh, not only business, but they've worked on their own stuff. They've worked a lot on their own stuff. Mm -hmm. They've worked a lot with clients. We've got hours and hours that we if, if, make them do mm -hmm. to make sure they're out there. So find out what level of experience they have mm -hmm. in working with clients. 
Mm -hmm. The other thing is find out what's, how they work with clients. Our girls, um, they work uh, online. We, we're in Australia. I've got students in the UK and, and Australia. They work online. So they work Zoom like this. Zoom might not be what you're comfortable with. You want, might want to see somebody face to face. Uh -huh. How can you see them? Where do you see them? Mm. So your institute certifies people. Is there an American equivalent to you? Does it matter? Say that again. Uh, is there an American equivalent to your institute uh, certification in America? No doubt, absolutely. It came from America, so they are. I believe I'm probably, and I've done my research, one of the first ones who've done it completely 100% online. Uh, the other schools I've researched, uh, traditionally they will do a couple of days in the classroom. You'll get your books and then off you'll go. Uh, that didn't work for me. I wasn't happy with that when that was my arrangement. Uh, so, yeah, we are 100% online. We come together twice a month online we can work globally i teach mm -hmm. our people how to do this globally so your clients are global and you're um and you're working global and studying global so does your institute have a list of of graduates and practitioners do you have a resource list like that we sure do so if you would go to go onto the website australiantappinginstitute.com.au you would head to how we help and under there we find a practitioner Excellent. under there we, we list all of our practitioners where they are based, but remember, most of them actually know even all of them work on online like this. It makes it global. Right. If we can get our time zones right, then we can use someone in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing, but you know what? Here in Australia, we used to work in the time zone, so we'll work it out for you. Yeah, you really are. It's amazing. I've spoken with several people in Australia recently, and I'm always like, I have no idea what time zone you're in. <laughs> And it's very funny because my husband actually lives in Hong Kong and I live in America and his, his time zone is very easy because he's 12 hours away. So it's either 12 or depending on daylight savings, 13. So it's really easy. It's like, well, I can always reach him in the morning and the evening. You know? <laughs> but for you guys, it's like, I, you know, I'm heading into my evening and you're just partway through your morning. Waking up. <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. Um, and Lorna, I wanted to just say that you have given us a special gift for our members, uh, yes. which is the Self Love Project online course. And please tell us what that is. And I will definitely put a link in our uh, module about how people can, can uh, sign up for that. Beautiful. It is. It's a free course. It's four weeks. It, can, it was actually born from my menopausal stuff as well of recognizing how angry and annoyed I was with my body yeah and then recognizing oh, that had a lot of conversations about that other people yeah. you know um Tanya Elfersey by any chance no I believe she's from the UK but she lives in Israel and she she has a, a coaching business built around like menopause coaching and that was what the very first interview I did I'm like I have to have you on here because she yeah. just has this this whole thing about why are we so upset with our bodies? Like our bodies are yes. doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. So it's like, be exactly. nice to them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that's what the self-love project is. It is, it's tapping based. So it's about getting to like your body, but it's an introduction to tapping and getting people with a little bit of structure around their tapping off. Here's a workbook and now here's a meditation on what you're to go and do. They're, they're not long. They're five or 10 minutes at the most. It's <sighs> five or oh, 10 minutes yes. a day. For a couple oh. of weeks that will get you into the tapping. Great. Well, yeah. thank you so much for offering that. And I will definitely put a link in. And uh, so if people want to find you, they can go to Australian Tapping Institute dot com dot au dot, dot com dot au or yep. okay. yeah, dot com dot au. Okay, perfect. All right. So I will also put that link in. And thank you very much for doing this. I'm so excited because I've, you know, I've heard about tapping. I've had a couple people introduce it really briefly in talks that we've done. And I'm always like, I'm so intrigued by it because I'm, I'm a recent convert to acupuncture and I'm just so excited to find something that is do it yourself at home. Mm, you've got some do it yourself. And you know, if any of your girls that are watching who know anyone who might want a, a career in this, yes. imagine adding tapping. So we, we do our 12 month courses, I said, but part of that is we help our students niche. So if somebody came in and goes, like, I want to work with menopausal women, we would spend the 12 months working on how do you create products and programs that are going to actually help them deal with that directly with you doing tapping. Oh, that's fantastic. All right. Yeah. So I will definitely drop all of your links and in our information. And Fabulous. thank you for joining me.
Thank you for well, making the technology welcome. work. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we have a YouTube channel too. If people just want to get on there and just do tapping, just want to follow along with me and just clear out some of their own stuff, jump onto YouTube again, Strain Tapping Institute, to just do some tapping. Wonderful. All right. <laughs> wow, you are going out and spreading the word for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for having us. It's been you, wonderful Anna. to connect with you it's and great to all the audience. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.